Hi, I'm Dawn, and this is where Chevy meets bling. Today, I'm going to take some thrifted items, disassemble them, reassemble them, and I'm going to create some beautiful Chevy chic decor. You are watching a Shabby Chic Spring Collaboration. I'd like to thank our host Jody from Jody at Southern Seasons and our guest host Teresa from R Green Acres, as well as Becky from Kinda Shabby and Annie from Crafting with Indie Annie Jones. You're going to find the link to this playlist as well as their fabulous channels in my description box below. This item was thrifted in a way. It was actually given to me by a friend who no longer wanted it. So I figure having paid nothing made me pretty darn thrifty, right? I picked this up at Goodwill. Yet another pepper shaker, only $1.49. I have made something else out of a pepper shaker. I'll leave that link in the description box below. Another thrifted item. This is part of a candle holder. Now these two little guys, these little knobs, they came off of a project that I did well over a year ago, as well as these cute little discs, the little wood discs. One was a quarter, and I can't really remember what I paid for the other. I will also be using one of these partial candle holders from a sconce. They actually began their life as one of these. These were home interior. I don't know if anybody remembers home interior, but these sconces were sold by that company, and I see them a lot while thrifting and very cheap. Uh, not so much online, but even the metal parts are useful. And now to disassemble this uh, gifted candle holder. And once I'm disassembled, I turn my attention to the pepper shaker and give it the same treatment. A little bit of a disassembling. <laughs> now it's time to prep everything. A little bit of sandpaper and I prepped all my wood items. There's a company called Bramble and they have furniture and they've been around for a long time. And that is what I'm taking my inspiration from today. The company still exists, but at one time they had beautiful French country and French provincial furniture that were in beautiful French colors with gold trim. And I am going to be painting my items uh this a beautiful pink ballet slipper which is a waverly chalk paint and i'm taking the the disassembled part from my candlestick and that other part that was just by itself and i'm starting by painting the insides of them with that beautiful ballet slipper i'm going to take some wood glue and hot glue and i'm going to get these two little discs put together, they are going to become the base for that disassembled uh, pepper shaker. And once my discs are secure, I'm going to be gluing that pepper shaker right smack dab in the middle of those two little discs. And once again, I am using wood glue and a little bit of hot glue to hurry along the process. And next comes that candle holder that I painted the inside pink. And I'm just hot gluing this right on upside down. And I'm also going to add a tiny little wood button right on top. For this, I am using three in one glue and hot glue to get this thing to adhere. As you're going, make sure you are centered. If you're not centered, this thing is going to look really bad when you're done. So take the extra time, twist it and move it around and make sure it's centered. I am now adding that partial candle holder from that sconce that I disassembled. Now to assemble uh, my other base. This is that other candle holder part that I had uh, just random by itself. And I am using some three in one and I'm going to glue this also upside down right on that base of that candelabra. This one also gets a little wood button. Why not? <laughs> we do want them to coordinate. And it's also going to get that little wood knob from a former project, which I kept because I keep everything. I am not a hoarder. Not a ho I like to keep things because I know I'll use them later. That's just being thrifty. Back to that beautiful Waverly chalk paint, that ballet slipper. I am going to give my little finial 
an entire coat of this paint and once it dries I will come back and hit it again because I don't want to see any of the color that already exists shining through. I am using paint to marry together all of my random objects to make this thing look like it always was one solid piece. As I said, I am making these to coordinate. So the big finial also needs to have that beautiful ballet slipper paint. So I am starting off by giving it its first coat. And once dry, it will also get a second coat. Now for the fun paint. Yes, <laughs> I busted out my dimensional paint. And I am adding where that little sconce piece met that little wood button. I'm adding a tiny little row of beads. Just a little. It's almost like frosting a cake. This stuff is so much fun to play with. I have used this in hundreds, literally hundreds of projects. It is so fabulous to just add a little dimension, a little detail right where you want it. You can see how by using just a little bit of that dimensional paint, it totally covers that seam. Bye-bye seam, bye-bye. This is how I like to store my dimensional paint. Once open, upside down, keeps the air to the bottom of the bottle, which is now at the top. <laughs> so the tall finial had a little weird blank space at the top. So I'm adding just some strategic lines and dots and then I'm adding a little more dimension to those leaf looking things and a little bit of a scallop at the base. My little finial is getting its own little extra boost of style <laughs> with the dimensional paint. Uh, not quite the same, but similar. I added some of the detail on the leaf looking things and each little tier of the base gets this little detail. And then I will be finishing off with its own little tiny pearlized drop 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 detail all the way around the bottom of the base of that first little tier. Then a third coat of pink ballet slipper. Now I go for my antique gold. I am taking the antique gold and I am just hitting here and there hit and miss all over both of my finials. You're not going to see all of the pink. You're not going to see all of this gold because I'm going to finish it with something different on top. These are just going to be peek through little peekaboo accent colors. Once that antique gold is dry, I move on to my Waverly plaster chalk paint and I am just hitting where I want. This is just whatever trips your trigger whatever pleases your eye these are going in my home so i'm painting these to satisfy my taste as i suggest all of you do as well it doesn't matter what someone else thinks of any project you make if you like it that is what counts and i am loving these colors together i am using a wash in some areas as well because I do want to very carefully cover some of that gold and some of that pink. So uh, solid plaster in some areas and kind of a watered down version of a wash in others. And I did not forget that little guy. He gets that same treatment with the plaster and a little bit of wash here, a little bit of solid there. I'm taking care of this little guy. He's going to be just as pretty as his tall partner in crime. <laughs> the crime of being gorgeous. This is just one, yes, just one of my shoe boxes full of goodies. These are all metal embellishments. I have disassembled from other things. And anytime I see anything that is a metal flower, a metal leaf, um, just some kind of filigree, I uh, grab it. I'm going to be using some of these vintage flowers in my project today. These actually came off of an old frame, an old vintage frame. So pretty. I cleaned the flowers up really well. And the really amazing thing about them is that they're crackled. There's a crackle finish. So even going over top of them, I'm not destroying that beautiful 
look of being old and shabby. So I am just touching up basically where the metal is showing through. I am blending both pinks so it coordinates nicely with the finials and I am covering that shiny, shiny uh, metal. I believe these things are aluminum. That bare metal where the paint came off is just too blingy and too new looking and it kind of destroys the look of the age that these beautiful flowers have obtained over the years. Now to touch up the gold because all of the little um, tips of the petals had some gold on them. So I am just kind of blending the gold I have with the gold that was already on these beautiful flowers. So they blend beautifully. I don't want two different colors of gold on this project because I don't feel it would look right. So I am just hitting the little gold areas in any place once again where the gold was and that metal is shining through. I think that beautiful flower is missing something. I think it needs a center, a little pistol. So I am just using some scraps of burlap and hey, go figure, I save all my scraps. And I am fraying the edges and I'm gonna turn it, this little piece over onto itself and create a little tiny center for that beautiful flower. Extraordinarily plain looking little lantern uh, was picked up at Goodwill and I think it has potential. It was only $4.49 and it's about two feet tall, but she needs some help. It definitely is not shabby nor chic, uh, but it will be, <laughs> it will be. So first thing I need to do is to uh, get that glass out of there so I can begin on making her a beautiful. With the glass safely out and put away for the moment, I give her a dusting and a good cleaning because she needs to be prepped for paint. As you can see, it kind of has a red strie effect on it and I find that very displeasing. <laughs> so a uh, fabulous coat of spray paint is gonna do the trick. Oh, I have chosen a beautiful rustic pink Rust-Oleum paint for my lantern. So let's paint, let's paint this little puppy. I am giving it a nice coat. And once the initial coat is dry, I will hit it again as many times as necessary to make sure she's thoroughly covered. Oh, and FYI, this is a matte paint, ultra matte actually. So <laughs> another metal thrifted candle holder. And that's the top of my pepper shaker. So I'm going to be adding these two elements as well as a couple little uh, wood discs, that little button and a little disc to the top of my lantern. I'm going to marry them together. I will be also adding some of this Dollar Tree uh, metal ribbon to the top of my beautiful lantern. I love this stuff. This is like a jewelry and if you ever see it, pick it up. I've also found it at Hobby Lobby. Haven't seen it either place lately. So a little wood pile disc from Hobby Lobby and one of these little wood buttons like is on both of my finials. I'm gonna glue them together and then this is gonna go on the top of the candle holder which is going on the top of my lantern. And then on top of this, we'll go my pepper shaker top. Is that confusing? I hope not. I will also be adding these little metal corners to the four corners of the bottom of my lantern. And it will get another coat of spray paint. So they will be that beautiful rustic pink as well. I have all my components that are gonna go on the top of my lantern spray painted and ready to go. Now I just need to make sure that all these items can be attached to one another. So once again, it looks like I have one uniform piece. I drill a hole in the wood and it is uh, deep enough and wide enough that I can just screw in that piece from my pepper shaker and it fit in there beautifully. I will unscrew it later and add some glue. 
Now the candle holder, that little metal nail that holds a candle needs to come out because I need a flat surface to glue our little uh, little round wood piece to. So I'm just gonna bend it and bend it and bend it until that little thing comes right on out. I attach my corners with three in one glue as well as all of the components that will go on top of the lantern. I also added a detail, that little drop, drop, drop pearl detail with my dimensional paint to hide any gaps between the metal ribbon and my lantern. Now to address the glass for in the lantern. I have taken all of the glass and I have cleaned it very well. Now anytime you're handling plate glass like this, please be careful if you've had a paper cut and you know how bad it hurts, a glass cut hurts even worse. Mm. And I am speaking from experience, so just be careful. I am using two different types of ribbon. Both uh, happen to come from the Dollar Tree. This beautiful embroidered lace, which is kind of an ecru color. I am measuring so that it is one inch away from my edge of my glass. And I'm running a strip down around each and every side. I'm creating a divided light effect for my little lantern. Now I'm coming back with this beautiful, beautiful pink and I am just gluing it right on top of that beautiful ribbon that I already put down. And I'm just gluing it at the edge, just hot glue, nice and simple, little dot and it will hold. The ribbon part is going to go on the inside of the lantern. So the glass is going to be on the exterior. So. It won't get dusty, it won't get dirty. Even if you wanna sit outside for a while on your porch or whatnot, it's still gonna maintain you know, a, a nice appearance because nothing is gonna be able to come into contact with our ribbon. I'm going to be using some more of these vintage metal flowers to do a metal arrangement for inside my lantern. And I might also be using this cute little bird. He's a thrifted Avon bottle, and he might make his way inside that lantern. Now that all of our items have been reassembled, enhanced, and painted, I'd like to show you how they came out. What began as a candelabra and an outdated pepper shaker became two beautiful finials. Not just gorgeous finials, uh, shabby, chic finials with a French Provencal flair. I love the dimensional paint and the added depth it gives these little finials. And how about those vintage metal flowers? Aren't they beautiful? I mean, I think they're probably about 60 years old and now they have a new life. And there's our lantern. There's our beautiful little lantern with the divided lights. And one nice thing is if I ever get tired of the divided lights, all I have to do is peel that ribbon off. And you can see I added a little rose on the handle. It was just a little too plain for my taste. And now our lantern has a lot more style with those five different components right on top. Hard to believe that is a candle holder and the top of a pepper shaker, but it is. And now they're all married together. Thanks again to Jody, Teresa, Becky, and Annie for letting me be part of this fabulous Shabby Chic Spring collaboration. You're going to find the links to this playlist and their channels in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your family and friends, anyone that likes DIY, thrifting, and Shabby Chic decor. You can follow me on Instagram and don't forget to check out my shop on Etsy best way to support this channel is to subscribe, so don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment. I would absolutely love to hear from you. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.